This is the only reason why I'm sitting here talking about this video right now is because Doctor Doom is by far one of my favorite Marvel villains of all time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Isaac Joel, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the massive announcements that were made this past weekend at San Diego Comic-Con, specifically in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Deadpool and Wolverine had just came out, and if you haven't seen my review, I highly recommend that you go check that out because that's going to kind of bleed into some of my thoughts and opinions that we're going to discuss today. For the last couple of years, Years, Marvel has been setting up Kang the Conqueror to be the next big villain compared to Thanos, Ultron, but all of this drama happened with Jonathan Majors, his girlfriend uh, accused him of abusing him and then he was being abused by her, they went to court and there was just so much drama that was happening there that ultimately the studio decided to cut ties with him. And this was kind of disappointing because it felt like, oh, we wish Marvel had learned their lesson with James Gunn and everything that happened over there, you know, don't be so quick to judge people or whatever, but it just seemed like so much baggage and just so much media and press was surrounding this that they really just kind of like swept it under the rug they never even I don't even remember them making an announcement an official announcement saying you know hey you know we had a good time but you know we're not gonna be working with Jonathan Majors anymore and his role as King the Conqueror was more impactful in Loki season two compared to Ant-Man Quantumania. And so it's really disappointing that they're really just kind of scrapping this. I don't know what they're going to do because they even set up King the Conqueror to be like this variant, this army of, of villains that was gonna be coming for the multiverse. There was this post credit scene that featured millions of King the Conquerors and different versions and different variants of him and they were essentially going to like battle each other and see who was going to take up the ranks and there was even like a council of kings and a lot of people were very excited me personally I know absolutely nothing about King the Conqueror nothing about the the comic books about him as a villain and so i was kind of learning about him as we were going along with this and i was doing a little bit of research and i thought it was kind of fascinating but i had absolutely no connection to this villain at all i wasn't excited about the announcement i thought jonathan majors was a good uh, actor at the time with uh, creed 3 uh, but now it seems like they're at a point where they need to course correct, they need to change, they need to adapt, and they're kind of scrapping to figure out what their next move is. And there's been a lot of talk the last couple of years and months and weeks on who's going to direct the next Avengers film. This was the first piece of announcement that was really standing out to me, and I was really looking forward to someone new coming in. I really love what the director of Black Panther did, Deadpool and Wolverine. I think there's so many other uh, directors out there that they honestly could have looked at and talked to and try to see what they can put together because I feel like we're in a new era of Marvel, but the last few movies I understand have not been hits. So they're course correcting right now. They're like, oh man, we should go backwards, go back to what worked. And instead of trying to figure out something new and experiment and take risks and challenges. And so the announcement was made that Anthony and Joe Russo, the Russo brothers are coming back. A lot of the fans were excited about this. I was one of those people that like just kind of put my head down and was very disappointed, kind of shocked because I understand that the Russo brothers went off and started their own studio company. They were making and producing their own movies. They were doing a lot of stuff outside of this. When their contract was finished with Endgame, they went on to Netflix. They started producing other action films and they weren't amazing not a lot of people talked about the gray man or even cherry with tom holland and i believe that they were also producers on the extraction movies i personally liked that they were stepping outside of their comfort zone and doing other things and challenging themselves and kind of putting themselves at a position where they were the studio heads themselves but it seems like kevin feige someone over at marvel was like you know what the only people that can honestly handle the Avengers is the Russo brothers. 
this i i really didn't want to jump on here immediately and give you guys my thoughts and be like this is a bad idea i hate all of this because i slept on this i really had to think about the pros and the cons and i was up all night debating on whether this is going to be something exciting for Marvel or if this is going to be a real miss for them. Directing an Avengers film is the most difficult challenge you can ask for any writer, director, actors, anyone that works on those projects, they understand that it is the most complicated project of all time. You're dealing with a lot of scheduling, a lot of conflicts, a lot of... Uh, <sighs> There's a lot of CGI, a lot of green screen volume, you know, there's so many different ways that they kind of come at these movies. And so God knows the direction that they're going to take these Avengers movies. I don't want them to do what they did with Affinity War and Endgame. I don't want a part one, part two. I don't need the Avengers to be this big epic saga that's expanding over 10 movies and really building up to this one thing. I feel like that's just too much homework. That's overkill. If we're talking about making these movies, every single superhero film be able to stand on their own, that's what the Avengers need to essentially do. Yeah, it's fun and exciting when you are caught up with all of the other media outlets, the TV shows, the movies, and you understand the direction that they're going with it. But at this point, it is so massive, the Marvel Universe with the multiverse and the street level heroes that it's just so complicated for, I think, general audiences to latch onto unless you're these like Twitter crazy fans and people that are really connected to the internet. A lot of people are just kind of scratching their heads at this whole like Marvel Universe. They're professionals at it at this point. They understand, it's like basketball at this point. They are the MVPs of the league and they know what it takes to balance and uh, how to really satisfy the audience and the fans and really make it uh, an event for everybody to come and see. And so at first I was very skeptical about it and now I understand why everybody is so excited about the Russos returning and directing the Avengers. I still feel like they need to prove to me why this is the best choice for them to come back after all of their accomplishments outside of Marvel. I really think that they are a unique and creative director team and so I was very much looking forward to what they were going to do after the Marvel movies. And so it just kind of feels like they're going backwards to me. But hey, let's we have two years. This movie comes out in two years. That is not far at all. They're filming it, I believe, now. They've already shot scenes. They're already developing it, which is really mind-bottling to me that they're able to move this fast in the process because they're in post-production on Ironheart, other TV shows, other Marvel specials, other movies. They're they're just Juggling so much right now and they're talking about Avengers. I feel like they really need to focus on what they have in front of them. The Avengers films need to go back to being a surprise. Like you didn't expect them to come back or when they're gonna come back. I really wasn't expecting and hoping them telling us this far in advance that hey, th these are the villains, this is the timeline, this is everything that's going on because things change they have to adapt after the russo brothers came on stage announcing that they are going to direct these next two films which is very exciting doomsday and secret wars they announced that dr doom is going to be the next villain taking up the ranks of king the conqueror now this is the only reason why i'm sitting here talking about this video right now is because dr doom is by far one of my favorite marvel villains of all time. I grew up watching him. I love how simple he is. He's really very much the Darth Vader. I know a lot of people kind of compare Thanos to being the Darth Vader of the Marvel Universe, but in my mind, it was always Doctor Doom. He was the Emperor. He knew exactly how to conquer the multiverse, the world beyond him. He had an army behind him of robots and he could even like corrupt superheroes minds and kind of make them do things for him and so he was this all-powerful 
being. It's really kind of hard for me to sit here and pinpoint exactly his his powers because they kind of been reiterated and, and changed and altered throughout the years through the comics and the movies. But he always kind of has these kind of like telepathic abilities where he's able to move objects and people and things around him. And it's really, really cool when he shoots like lightning out of his hands. That's very, very Palpatine. It's obviously the thought of Doctor Doom joining finally the Marvel Marvel Universe has me excited. My mind is blown when the lights turned green and the army came out and they said, well, listen, we need to get the best actor of all time. And so the Dr. Doom stepped aside and then comes forward. One individual takes off his mask and it is revealed to be Robert Downey Jr. And the crowd goes absolutely ballistic. Me, on the other hand, I was watching the live stream from home. I wasn't like jumping and screaming and excited like, oh my God, Robert Downey Jr. is back. I can't believe it. This is so exciting. The Russo brothers are back. Everything's going to come back. Like, it just felt like, hey, remember? Remember? This is the member berries. This is literally the thing that we talk about, the nostalgia that even Deadpool was talking about in the most recent film of, hey, the multiverse thing, are we a little bit over it at this point, guys? Like, it, it really has not progressed. It's kind of digressed a little bit. And so I felt like them being so meta in that movie was like, hey, you know what? The TVA, all this stuff is getting kind of confusing and a little bit too much. Maybe we should, you know, course correct and go another direction but obviously not. Robert Downey Jr. portrayed Iron Man in the previous films and he had one of the most epic sacrifices ever in Endgame and Kevin Feige has referred to Logan, Wolverine, if you can revisit a character such as Logan without dishonoring that legacy in that film and, and kind of putting it into another world, then and only then does it feel right and so, when I hear him talk about it like that, listen, Robert Downey Jr. is the best of the best. He is the Iron Man. He is the one that started all of it. And so it feels to them, the studio, right, to go back to him, to bring him back into the mix of it. Well, he was the one that saved the universe. What if he was the one that was coming to destroy it? I understand to some people, now, to some audiences, that is a very exciting idea. Maybe Tom Holland's Spider-Man comes across with him and he's kind of conflicted and confused because Tony Stark was his mentor and now he has to fight this variant version of him that looks just like him. I understand that this could make interesting conversations and dialogue and drama, but again, it was so confusing to me. It just felt like, why are we going back to this? why it feels like something new but not entirely now robert downey jr is a phenomenal actor there's no doubt in my mind that robert downey jr is the perfect choice for dr doom he auditioned to be him back in the 2004 fantastic four film and for whatever reason they did not give him that role years later he became iron man and look what that became of him and it felt like a really perfect closing chapter on the Tony Stark legacy. And so I don't think, in my opinion, if we want to theorize now, is Robert Downey Jr. going to portray Victor Von Doom? Probably not. He's probably going to play Tony Stark from another universe who became Dr. Doom, who became corrupted and saw that the Avengers and everything just wasn't working and, and, and became this villain and wanted to take over the world and i can see that corruption i could see that playing off really really well on screen i am still very conflicted i i am still very confused why they wanted to go back to him i understand his accomplishments with oppenheimer everybody saw that film he won so many oscars and awards for his supporting role in that and so I feel like the Academy was so proud of him and Marvel was so proud of him. Everybody around him was like, listen, dude, you obviously can do anything. Can you imagine if you came back to the Marvel Universe and was the next villain and destroyed and killed people? He probably was like, yo, that is very fascinating. That is a good angle and a good thought. Now, there is something they know that we don't know. 
and, and I think we're not going to see that until next year, until we see some teasers, some trailers, until we hear the voice of Robert Downey as Dr. Doom. The only reference that I can come to that this comes close to feeling like is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. If you're familiar with that video game, it featured Doom as one of the main villains, I believe in one and two, but specifically in the first game, there was this opening scene that featured Thor, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and, and all your favorite heroes just coming together with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. fighting against Doctor Doom and his army. This would be amazing if it was finally realized on the big screen and we saw that team up after we saw Deadpool and Wolverine and all those cameos and those heroes that came together to help fight it felt like okay Secret Wars can be literally the most insane movie we have ever seen in our lives and obviously we thought Endgame was wild I can't imagine what Secret Wars is going to be the Fantastic Four is currently being shot right now but they showed footage and it reminded me of the Jetsons it takes place in a 19th 60s multiverse uh, another dimension where they are essentially going off into space i don't believe there is like a buzz aldrin or a nasa i believe it is the baxter building it is mr fantastic and his team coming together and exploring the cosmos and that is some way somehow going to lead to their world being destroyed and they have to retreat over into our sacred timeline uh, of the mcu where they have to fight off dr doom dr doom is going to come from another universe i don't know if he's going to have any connections if he's going to actually face off i hope he has something to do in the fantastic four we now know that galactus is going to be the main villain they're going to possibly show silver surfer so there's so many different possibilities with what they're going to do in Avengers Doomsday, Avengers Secret Wars. I really feel at this point now because of the Fox merger, now that we have connections to all of these heroes and the actors and hey man they and it, all it takes is a paycheck at this point to bring anybody back we're going to see andrew garfield toby mcguire hugh jackman as wolverine face off robert downey as dr doom is this going to be exciting is this going to feel like just so much nostalgia like hey we're kind of past this like this this should have happened a long time ago it's cool to see now but i would have loved to seen a new actor come in and do something different with that role I'm very excited to see what exactly Robert Downey Jr. is going to bring these are kind of just my general thoughts right now all of this can change once we see some footage once we see something that really solidifies why this is a good choice there's so many questions honestly at this point as to why they're doing this and if he's going to be that victor von doom i don't think that that's going to work if, if he's just going to be another version another villain and then people look at him like oh he reminds me of tony stark in our universe and he's like who's that i have no idea who you're talking about i'm not really looking for that lazy writing very curious to hear what are your thoughts about the russos returning robert downey jr coming Coming back into the Marvel Universe, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I've been Isaac Joel. I'll catch you next time.